Hello you beautiful lot and welcome to today's episode of Purple Vision. Now I've made my way out to Earthlinborough, Earthlinborough Lakes and where the spur line for the Ebervale mine went up into Earthlinborough. Just off there there's a tiny little spit of land that is going under an investigation at the minute and an archaeological dig, otherwise known as Earthlinborough's Big Dig. Now it's been going for the last two weeks and they've found quite a lot of Roman stuff and quite a bit from the Iron Age. I came here last week and of course it was a little bit early so I thought it would be best I come back down today. So I'll show you the aerial footage of what they found, found so you can see the, the footprints that they've uncovered. So, and this is what we've got now. And you can see this bit here and here and apparently this one here has been Iron Age where they found a coin and um, a piece of flint which was used for scalping. It's cool. Well, you don't need to hear me yapping much longer. The expert's going to give us the lowdown. Awesome. Let's give him five minutes to prepare everyone because he's the overseer of what everybody's doing and making sure everything's right. So, um, yeah, wait for him to come along and he'll give us the, uh, the 411. Okay, right, so we've got Derek with us and he's been leading the, uh, the way here, haven't you, bud? And he's an absolute delightful gentleman. And uh, thank you for giving us a quick lowdown on what we've got here. So, how have you been getting on? Uh, well, the volunteers have been good. There's been a steady trickle coming in. Yeah, nice. Uh, we've averaged, I mean, eight people a day. But we didn't advertise. We came in quick. But the open day on Saturday, there was a good 150 people here. Oh, beautiful. Plus the diggers, and we were overrun, which uh, is fantastic. Uh, yeah. Children and everything, which is what we want. That's it. Young get, people in. get that next generation going, because I'm the youngest one here at the moment. Yeah, yeah. and that's the trouble, you see. Well, yeah. I'm in my mid-twenties, you see, and um, <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Archaeology's a hard job, isn't it's it? It's a hard yeah, job, but it's nice getting young people on, but they tend to stick a bit of this probably if you're digging because it's exciting. Hmm. But lectures and that afterwards, if you can find anybody under 40 at a lecture, and there's nothing wrong with that, no. it's trying to get those younger people back into it. Ab absolutely. Well, well this is probably going to be part of that. Hopefully, we can get the youngsters from Earthlinborough yeah. down here and start yeah. to appreciate the heritage they're walking over every day with their dogs. That's it, because it's, it's Roman, isn't it? So that's, that's years, and you've even found some Bronze Age stuff as well. Well, there's, you know, there's well, Iron Age, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, Iron Age, right. sorry. I'm Iron not Age. I'm going to put my foot on that, so yeah. So no. there's pottery from the trench over there, which is, let's just say, cruddy, prehistoric. It needs a good look at. Oh, how, wow. Can I just ask, how do, how do you advertise? How do you get people to, to, to be aware of... I, I, I live a couple of villages along yeah. and I've not heard anything about this. No, well, we came on and we put it onto Facebook. Okay. Immediately we came on. And, and then where, got whereabouts interest. on Facebook were people find uh, it? I think it's the Earthenborough Archaeological Society. Okay. Okay. I don't know exactly how it's named on there. Okay. That would be um, the chairman. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm around. Yeah, yeah. But they're formed and they formed, I think, in 2016. And because of whatever, it all just died a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So we've been trying to get back on site to build up some interest. Bloody right. Locals back into it. It's a free society to join. Yeah. They also have a website, but I think it's all going to now be revamped and we're going to have a massive push you know, over the next 12 months and then hopefully over the next four years. Oh, brilliant. And, and create a project which is going to map out this site, put it into its surroundings, hopefully, and then find, you know, and culminate in a big dig over a nice building and then publish that and then that will be their legacy they'll be able to push this on it's and then as we get too old shit. and i'm just pointing at people <laughs> yeah, yeah. So i wouldn't have done it what, like that what do you believe is the extent of this site i've obviously got these, these trenches in here now but what is your belief i know you've done some geophysical work well, they did, yeah. well earthenborough did so they did it with oxford so they did some geophysics over two years and that seems to show us that there's something that we call a strip settlement okay. ladder settlement okay. roadside settlement running up here and we are possibly within an enclosure here, so an enclosure ditched settlement. And then there's another one, and then there's another one. Right. And there may be more running that way. Oh, now, wow. usually they're oriented on something. Okay. And it's usually something they're communicating with their outside world with. So hmm. they're obviously going to markets and whatever else, or they're pulling in roadside trade. Well, you've got Urchester just here, haven't you? Exactly. And you've got Crow Hill up there. Crow Hill. Well. And there's, um, you've got the river as well that uh, can transport all of it. I am for, yeah. Yeah. There may the well have been a forded crossing here. Right, okay. And that's the job, isn't it? We can we can more or less characterise what we think we've got. Yeah. We now need some information on the everyday lives of this site. We know what these sites are like. Yeah, yeah. And we know what the buildings are like. Mm. Rectangular, more or less two to one. We know the building techniques they use coming from the first, second, third, and fourth centuries. It's the intricacies of the internals of the building. So we might have a corn dryer over there 
for instance. Okay. There's loads of them yeah. and they conform to certain shapes, certain okay. sizes. We can tell that that's more or less industry of whatever sized industry, but it's knowing exactly what they do with that one. You know, that mm. they say they're malt houses, they say they're corn dryers, you know, they're, they're big ovens. How do you prove that? Yeah, Most yeah. of the stuff that you can prove that with is gone, yeah, yeah. rotted away, yeah, yeah. blown away with the wind. So we go down meticulously, beautifully on these sites because it's all volunteers, so we have time. Mm. Obviously, if we open up an area, we want to excavate it as much as we can because we've got to backfill it. No, then again, but we have the beauty of going at our pace and eke out layers so we go down. I mean, you, you can imagine inside a building, a good hard trail to clean it you might lose four or five floor layers yes yeah. i mean how can you not yeah, yeah you've got to get rid of contamination yeah. look but that's all you can do within a building yeah, yeah when we go over to trenches like that where we're sort of projecting across to evaluate where we are <laughs> so go from possible buildings that we know a date of and go straight across a big oiky feature like a ditch or a pit we can then drop down to a previous level yeah and as we can see over there if we do go over there yeah there's probably about half a meter of what i'm suggesting is roman occupation here so oh, they're building okay. and that's demolition rebuild demolition rebuild should, should we have a wander over that yeah do you, do you want to? so that's where we are so the, the, the whole point of this was to get in evaluate map out a section yeah generate some interest that's what we want bling we want the building. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the bling. The, uh, the corn dryer or whatever it is. And then well, that, that, that would have been that would have been heated by obviously by fire, wouldn't it? Maybe yeah, so then they expose it there. I don't know whether you can actually see it, but some of the stones right at the flue end, so right at the opening of the flue, yeah. it's gently heated. So the limestone, which is usually a sandy or white colour, has gone greyish to reddish to purple. Oh, all okay. in an open area and as they excavate along the flue you tend to get a very thin deposit of ash but really fine sooty ash and charred grain oh, so leaving a, leaving a mark for you to tell something leaving a mark for the, and that's the stuff the, the boulderous stuff over the top which they're backfilled with gives us an episode that someone wants to fill that in and use the area you don't want to be falling into a big hole oh, no. so that's another phase that we've got to point out but right down at the bottom that charcoal oh. stuff is wow. the essence of what was going on when they were using it. So maybe we can get something for that. What we're definitely going to be able to see is they did use grain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there is going to be stuff for making bread. And there is going to be stuff for making beer. We just have to prove it. I'm with and that's, you. A, that's another load of money that we'll need to conjure up from somewhere. So what do you do for post egg stuff? Because obviously this is this you, you can get people in here doing yeah, that's this. It. What, what happens for the post egg stuff? Post eggs will we'll come off now because we, we've got an agreement, or I've got an agreement that I will head this as long as it's done properly. Yeah. So we've informed the county, we wrote WSI, it's a written scheme of investigation, and that sets out professionally how this is going to be done, but as awesome. a volunteer basis. So we want community research. So we then take all of this stuff and our commitment is then to price that, find if we can tame, as we call tame professionals, that don't mind spending a few hours, a few days, looking at the stuff we can bag up and shove under their noses. Uh, like, like, can... like your Donna. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, if yeah, we can yeah. find people like that, and there are many that will give their time, and many do, we can then produce something that we can put in front of people and say, now we're ready to move on to the next. So I have people to look at the pottery once it's washed, hmm. So basically at the beginnings of the post decks, all the um, volunteers will take bags home, wash it, rebag it, make sure it's numbered correctly because each thing will come off with its own number as we can see in section. That's, that's so they're it. all context numbers telling us a part of a story as we go down and then it comes to the professionals. So I will be able to give a bit of my time to go through some stuff. Uh, I've got some colleagues who will do the pottery, I've got some colleagues that will do the bone, but some of that stuff that will have to go to people that can process it. So do the flots. So we tend to churn it up in water, catch anything that floats on the surface, oh, okay. sieve it all through micro mesh. And then we will look to, again, for charred grain, fish bones, oh, anything wow. that might show up that will give us a clue. And, and that's that black stuff there, is it? And that may be that black stuff there. We are obviously low down and we can see the water tables come up. Yeah. But that may be just black like that because it's survived. We, are, we have got a gully that's coming off from the top there. Seems to be a gully. And that may be uh, filtering down residues from whatever they're doing up there. It could be general domestic waste, it could be industrial waste, it could be a mix of both. So we will take that, float it, and there's a possibility there's even up. proper organics in there. So wood, fragments and stuff like that. That's, that's why, especially on a, a community, that you have to limit yourself. Yeah. Because there's money down there and you've got to stop. Because if you find anything like a wattle hurdles, oh, anything right. like that, revetting with timber in it, 
that ramps up the cost. Oh, it's right. It's all right sieving dry dust and looking for bones which aren't going to go anywhere. We can bag them up nicely. You start hitting timber or leather, then that's big money. You oh, have to think, right. how are you going to protect that leather? We don't want to take it out and have it rot. Oh, uh, well, of course. We're doing this for the public. That means if we take it out, it's got to be looked after properly. Yeah, it's yeah. Then and the then it's got to be preserved. And, and it has to have a resource for research and for the public. They need to be able to go somewhere and look at what we've taken out. Oh, wow. So that's what these bags are then, isn't it? This and that's what these bags are. So we've sampled there and we tend to take a, a certain amount. We like to take about 30 litres. If it really was good stuff, we were, we were thinking about 60 litres, yeah, yeah. maybe up to 90 in some counties they'd like. But that allows us to do something like a 10 litre subsample. That okay. will be sent for evaluation. If they come back with a big red green tick going, please, can we do the rest? That is packed full of stuff. Then we've got the other two bags to then go and have a look at. Right. Yeah. And then brilliant. that will set the research brief and the sampling brief and the regime that we take for anywhere we think we're going to dip. <laughs> if you've got industrial things coming through, they can, they can give us some some weapons to go onto the next site with. Yeah, yeah, because you've got another two sites down that way, did well, you say to do? Site, well, what you, we you... tend to do, I think, is probably have seasons where we, probably two or three seasons where we go out and map. Okay. A lot of these sites, like I say, we know what the buildings look like. We know they're in enclosures. It's now trying to characterise the type of complex enclosure it is. The only way to do that is to geophysics, yeah, the ground and around it, out. look at field systems, look at paddocks, look at roadways and trackways out, and then map what buildings you've got within enclosures. Once you have all of that, you've got the character. You know, okay. so we know how to communicate. We then have to again drop in and pull out some of those nuances. You know, what was. What was Eric doing in there to say? It's not a very Roman name. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Silvinus. <laughs> Silvinus is in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is why I hate Mondays. It's blah, 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 blah. I've got to go and do that again. But what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What yeah, exactly yeah. is that? Yeah. And then where's he going for a drink? And what's he eating? And then what does he do at the weekend? Well, work probably. <laughs> but where's he sending the stuff? Yeah. And that's where you start to map it all out. Oh, wow. And and that is in near yeah, impossible. It. Yeah. yeah, it is, because it is all guesswork, isn't it? it Archaeology. Is. Unless you've got a nice wetland site. But again, it's not wetlandish, but we have got a water table there, so we have to be very, very careful. Does, that, does the wetland help preserve it then? Oh, yeah, because I mean, there's depth there. So you can almost imagine down there there's anaerobic okay. environments down there. So, where, so what, stop... what, you're, what you're saying here is that this ground level here is two three thousand years ago you believe if, that, is, if that's, is, is that's where people would have been doing whatever they were doing whatever they were doing and then we've got a flood deposit you can't the certain thing is awful at the moment we've got like a clay silting deposit right the way through which other things have cut like the yes yeah, 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 there. Yeah. yeah and they're very clear in section and that's why the sections are beautiful because yeah. they'll show us end of life of the roman site there yeah they show us build up with all that ironstone and that in it we think they're building up to be able to create these Things, right, okay. And revet themselves probably okay. and stop themselves falling yes, into this yeah, wetter yeah. area down right, here. Okay. Oh, but, it's okay. cut. but that is a flood deposit from the Neen or from this brook, if this is an old brook, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And settlements <laughs> need their water. Just there. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to be oriented on stuff. They're going to be situated topographically to a water source. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. have to be. Or well, they're not the, I mean, the land's uh, a bit further away. It's a bit further away than yeah. it used to be even yeah. 100 years ago, isn't it? That's right. Ago, I mean, if you map that out... So it could have been over here back then. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, you look from the bridge as you come into Earthlinborough and it's flat. Yeah. It's not a glacial valley, but it's as flat as a glacial yeah, valley yeah, yeah. is. And yeah, it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, the first thing you think is, why are they here? But we're, we're above 20 metres here. I think we're 36 metres odd here. That's a good place to be. Yeah. First century, that's where a lot of these farmsteads and that are being situated in that level there. But it was also navigable, wasn't it? The, the numbers yeah, yeah, very navigable. I mean, the, we so can't again, think I mean, of Roman boats as being great big things, but they weren't, were they? They were small no, enough no. to go up The barges down. were big, but they were big, big enough, you know, small enough to come up to here. They could be using that, they could be a trackway or a, a quite metal road somewhere yeah, yeah. that's taken them to a point. Yeah. Again, it's yeah, yeah. it's mapping that out. This will be one of many that are being put as a spot on a map. Yes. You yeah, know, and the yeah. more we can do, but properly, the better information we yeah, have. Yeah, fantastic. And it's only recently with the developer-led <laughs> excavations that we've had a massive information that's act to actually been able to be looked at and synthesised and give us a view on exactly what's going across the le uh, length and breadth of The problem Britain. with the developer-led stuff, though, is that it's very quick and uh, it yeah. can be very quick. Well, it's very quick. It's the synthesis and it doesn't and the information the afterwards. local people either, does it? That's it the, does. That's no, we this, have to this, be in this, the is, this is why we love this big dig, because yeah. so it's great. for I mean, us. Right there, that little area there will be gone by now. We'd have it tagged and bagged, and it will be in the archive. Yes. Uh, if it's a really special site, there will be a publication, and the developer pays for that, which is brilliant. But a lot of that information, especially little spits and 
whatever going across a little trial trench here and there's a little extension there it all just sits there but just recently I think it's over the last 10 years there's been some major tomes of work come out where they've just crunched the numbers yes and yeah. looked at the biggest problem they've found with the information is that they can't characterize the site again we know what the buildings look like there's buildings like that right the way through yeah yeah it's getting that wider view because that road was going view through we got a little bit of an enclosure yeah, yeah. with a building in it or half of a building but that building could be a, could be an even bigger settlement so what is it is it, is it a big complex settlement with uh, internal courtyards or crew yards is it yeah. a big complex settlement where they're developing internally or was it the original earthling borough or was it the original earth now well, really? that's not bad that's where yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's but, where but you, you, right, yeah. yeah so leave me in my dream world i'm happy <laughs> no, that's right but i mean there's some blood from the original people here that will be within the local oh definitely community. yeah yeah the biggest yeah, conversation yeah. is where do the romana british go after the romans leave well they're here yeah, yeah. they're just yeah. not necessarily living in this yeah yeah. Why would you live in that? It's hard they to eat. The, they moved up the side of the valley there. Yeah, yeah away from the away from the flood yeah, yeah. And they're very hard to eat. Mm. So a, a nice roundhouse again. And, and and is it believed that the Romans had um, a sort of a staff of locals or slaves, if you like, or servants that would have kept them less warmer? You know, bringing wood, woods in from the yeah. Well, the people working the site were probably slaves. Okay, so yeah. they would have they, they and they would have been local people. Possibly. Okay. Yeah, again, I mean, find a graveyard. Find yeah, a graveyard no, no, and have a look exactly, at that. Yeah, no, exactly. exactly. Um, it depends. A lot of these sites are being or trying to be associated with villas. So you have a villa around this area, what, three and a half, four kilometres span. That'll have an estate. Okay. okay. That will either have complex farmsteads around it okay. that are diverse, producing metalwork, cropping the land, they'll have stock, they'll be producing all sorts of tanneries and all sorts of that. Just to feed the villa? just to feed the villa right okay you know so that's yeah. that's part so someone from the senate maybe on the you know the ideal view somebody that's good with the senate knows the emperor he's given them a load of land or they've been able to find favor and get in yeah, yeah. they will then probably never visit this land but they'll have a big villa because okay. that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah, my yeah, villa. Yeah, that's the but there's the an estate being worked yeah, by yeah. state workers they are the slaves oh, they get wow. up every day they feed themselves but they keep this, the estate running. Okay. Others, okay. we're trying to say, are oh, if we can find Iron Age background here, Iron Age settlement, is it the locals here? Where was it doing good? Has he decided to go for it? Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a road close by, and there's loads of people coming by here, and what they want is whatever they're doing here. Yeah, yeah. And they set up, and they're making good, and they expand. You can imagine wow. in the first century there, there's you know probably a roundhouse and they're starting to enclose an area and do stuff there. Hmm. Second century, there's more timber buildings going up, which is slightly different on their foundations. Third and fourth century, there's whopping great stone foundations stone, going up yeah, yeah. and a big barn. Now that is a big barn. Yeah. Realistically, if you think about what we're saying, yeah, the yeah, people yeah. are here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to generate money. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. 350 onwards. It's gone in certain areas. So these buildings end up looking like this. Yeah. Look, falling yeah, over one walls. One building in the whole site might have a family in it. Yeah, yeah. So this could be like a wall that's falling over. And that's it. And then that's then then, then they move up there because and then they've gone somewhere because they can't. Where, where have they gone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then that's you're the into thing, the whole it? migration. Yeah, 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 exactly. Whatever from the Saxons. So, but that therein lies the problem. How do we know? There's a lot more analysis being done on yeah, growth yeah. like that, and we tend to realise that what we were saying was a local group, and what we we're saying was an immigrant group is now. A yeah, mix. The yeah, yeah, they're yeah, taking man. on yeah, some of their yeah, cultural yeah, yeah. artifacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're living their their way, or they're living their way, or they're intermingling. Yeah, right? And you get no. a mix of everything. And that gents, is that really what the picture is? I think that's a statement now, though, isn't it? You know, the yeah. immigrant populations. Yeah. If you look at the Huguenots and things, you know, they just become part of the. They do. Uh, yeah, and that's the, it. The yeah. local, the local society. Don't but how do you get really? that out of soil? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we want yeah. a book. Don't and we? Then, yeah, we want the ledger. We want the ledger from the barn. You know, where was that? The thing is, where young lad over there, even books are not necessarily written. I mean, you would be, you know, he was definitely writing with a certain. No, that's right. Uh, yeah, and he was definitely writing, and um, he listened with the political to political slant, that wasn't listened he? Listened to oral histories and read the text that the Romans are leaving, and that he's getting from Rome or wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wherever he's yeah, reading, yeah, yeah. and he's he's putting together a story which yeah, yeah. he thinks he's right, and he'll have a bent towards the way he wants it yeah, to yeah, be, yeah, yeah, which is always it's written by the victors. Yeah, yeah. And it's written by a certain class yeah, yeah. of people, yeah. and that's what we're trying to get away from. And there's some there's some brilliant people on the TV now that are doing it looking at the common folk you know hmm. who's making the bread yeah, yeah exactly. and there's people yeah, making yeah, bread that yeah, have made a lot yeah, of money yeah, yeah, yeah. you know 
So when we look at Rome and Britain, we look at the provinces and we look at Rome, there's a lot of money being generated. And then it's gone. Yeah. In Crazy. Essence, yeah, yeah. There's patches of stuff carry on. Some die out completely. And like you say, you come walking down here with the dog and there's 350 years worth of our Roman archaeology in your feet. Yes, yeah, who's exactly. thought it. And who knows? And that's the and we know it. Yeah, yeah. Because we're archaeologists. We're reading the books and put it together. But, you know, and you think these people don't want to know. But you open it up yeah. and you point to it and say, that's it, and come and have a go, and they're all here. Yeah, I see. I, I like your phrase that I saw in the paper, though. Everywhere you spit, you're spitting on a Roman. In, in Northamptonshire, did... Cambridgeshire, yeah, Oxfordshire. Yeah, you know, you start to look at that, and if you spit, you're going to hit something Roman. Yeah, yeah, and, I, I did like that there, phrase. They were dumping their stuff there, and that's yeah. how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Fantastic. Brilliant. Well, well, I think what you're doing is great. Absolutely, yeah. 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 What I've just learned, just even last time when I come down and spoke with you, you, you filled my, my brain up. I went away thinking so much. I got on the phone with Jamie and told him what I, I knew to try and prove to you what I know, because that's what I do. I'm the student, he's the teacher. <laughs> I know my teacher. Place. I mean, I, I know no, he's teaching. He's a shot for 15 minutes. I know. Minutes. Spoke, not, not, for a long, not for a long, you know, not by a long shot. I, um, I learn every day. And you're always going to find you're always going to find a quirk, and most people look at it and say, "Why is it a quirk?" No idea. You know, it's just a you know it's a parochial positive. thing, or it's just something that happened. You yeah. know, who knows with vernacular buildings? They, yeah, yeah. they go up, people do them a certain way, but they conform. Yeah, yeah. There's certain things that does drift through, you know, and you look at that and start to pull that apart. But again, if we can just find something that will make this site stand out a little bit above the rest by finding a little bit of personal information, yeah. and that would yeah. be really good because yeah, yeah. we know there's going to be. Cool and then the next time when you come back in two or three years' time. If, you, if you've got something that you can say, well, you yeah, we want our streaming peers. down here. Well, I would they? like my peers to look on and say what they are doing is spot on. Yes, yeah. You know, yeah it's yeah. current thinking, and that's going across ditches and pits, you know, going out into the field networks and looking at that and trying to date that and put the nucleus of all that together, as well as looking at what everybody goes for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we tend it. to hit the periphery of that, go all the way around, and then we'll drop in to give it a know it's swan song Dunk. yeah and then we'll see what they want to do if the locals want to carry on there'll be the rest of it to look yeah, at yeah, and maybe fantastic. satellite excavations yeah, to yeah. bring in more research you know to develop that yeah, landscape yeah. study that's we'll awesome but it's money. absolutely money. amazing that's what we need. yeah all right well, well i'll promote you the best way i can thank, thank, you, very thank you very much Derek. Yeah, thank you. absolute pleasure mate and next time we are here i will plan it a bit more because i've got no, a newborn exactly. and that's my problem if I wanted to get in quick so we can do it with our 12 months of advertising yeah. preparation then we'll have proper days we yeah, can come yeah, on exactly. we can give a proper tour we'll have signs up mm. and hopefully you'll see a lot more people yeah yeah well, I'll, I'll be more stuck in next time got a newborn it's uh, yeah, yeah. time's taken yeah, up no, I mean, it does. If, I'd, if I'd known it was down here I'd have been I'd have been no exactly I'd have been yeah, digging with it. you you know I'd have been more than happy to that's do that. yeah well the society you know look them up over the next 12 months and then see what's going yeah, on see the yeah. Earthlingborough Park 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 that's it the IAS 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 I like that it's not a rebel group down here no it might be anyway I suppose we better let you crack on they're all looking at you like they need orders yeah anyway it's been a pleasure thank you very much thank you very much Lovely. So, well, there you go. Uh, the teacher was being taught. Yeah, the fact he knows what he's talking about. He doesn't does, he? doesn't he? That's absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, when they do come back um, into Earthlingborough and they do their next little dig, I'll keep you all informed and hopefully you lot can come and join me as well and we'll see what we can do for these lot. Absolutely brilliant. Amazing history. I love it. Yeah. Jamie, thank you for bringing me back out here. Right. I would have struggled today. So, um, yeah. All right, on that beautiful note... Peace, love and light to you all. We're a big old touch of unity. Thank you, Jamie. Oh, beautiful. Yeah.